Hi, I'm Terrence Bird. At Health First New Jersey, we believe everyone should be informed about the important health care issues that affect them and their families. That's why Health First is proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation. Pregnancy Health, next on Caucus New Jersey. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Englewood Hospital and Medical Center, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents, and by New Jersey Natural Gas, proud to support education in our communities. Welcome to Caucus, New Jersey. I'm Steve Adubato. You know, there are many factors that contribute to a mother's overall health and the well-being of the child she carries. Here to give us insight into a woman's journey through pregnancy are Dr. Faith Frieden, who is the chief of the Department of, of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Englewood Hospital Medical Center, Elise Zimmerman, co-executive director for the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey, Barry Nolan, who is a first-time expectant mother and a patient of Dr. Frieden, and also Dr. Yvonne Wesley, an independent health consultant. I want to thank you all for joining us. Thank this is a program all about pregnancy health. Throughout this entire program, you're going to see website information up. Follow up. Get that information. Uh, there have been so many questions that we've been talking about before we got on the air. Some of them will make it. Some of them will not. But, Doctor, I want to ask you, let's talk about a couple of things right out of the box that are important. How important is age, the age of an expectant mother, when it comes to pregnancy health? How much does it matter? Well, age 25 is, versus, versus 35, how much does it matter? Um, 25 <coughs> versus 35 is not as critical. I think um, when you talk about uh, moms who very often are now with um, uh, delaying childbearing into um, the late 30s and early 40s, that becomes more of a factor. How so? Um, what changes? You're, you're 41, all right, I'm going to have my first child. I waited, I tried to build my career. Now I'm ready. What changes? Well, a couple things. First of all, the risk for chromosomal abnormalities increases as we get older than 35 years old. Second of all, as we get older, and this is true for men and women, the chance for some other superimposed medical complications such as diabetes, hypertension, illnesses like that, chronic medical conditions, those are um, then superimposed on top of pregnancy. So um, it's an additive risk of uh, underlying medical conditions and also just the risk for chromosome problems as we age. So stay on that in terms of pregnancy health. What specific things do you recommend that a woman do if she is 41 and or anywhere in that range, first pregnancy, to do everything possible to make it the safest, healthiest pregnancy possible? Okay. Well, the most important thing that a woman can do is to optimize her own health. And a good rule of thumb is generally the best thing for a healthy baby is a healthy mom. So if you have a condition such as, as I mentioned, diabetes, hypertension, speak to your doctor, tell him or her that you're planning to try to conceive and have them work with you to make sure you're on medications that are safe to take in the first trimester of pregnancy, um, make sure that your glucose levels are under control, um, stop smoking, stop drinking, things like that. Or don't start. Or don't start. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, let, let's talk about this. I'm curious. Go ahead, jump, yeah, jump in, doctor. Yeah, can I jump in on, on the, the age question? You've been with us before. I know you jump in. <laughs> That's what make, that's why oh, yeah, you're here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> on, the, on the age question, if you just kind of look at New Jersey data relative to age, and certainly one of the major complications or, or issues in maternal child health, preterm labor, um, it actually looks like a bit of a U, if you would. So the very young seem to have a lot of preterm labor, and the older seem to have a lot of preterm labor. And the bottom of that curve, if you would, is somewhere between age 25 and 29 for, low, for uh, preterm deliveries. So what do we take away from that? Age has something to do with when you're going, if you're going to uh, deliver prematurely. So age does seem to be a factor in producing a healthy baby. And, and uh, this is interesting because I keep asking the question, and by the way, the reason we got into this with our partners at Englewood is because I'm convinced that as much information as we think is out there, there's a lot of misinformation, a lot of confusion, mm -hmm. a lot of myths. How aware do you think most women are of what you just said? Elise. Yeah. I think actually that the word preterm birth is confusing. In fact, I think that most people, most women, think that every pregnancy is going to result in a healthy baby. And women are actually shocked when they have a baby who's born too small or too early. 
And I think that I would just <laughs> add, I would that. add to Dr. Frieden's comment about you need to know your own family history in terms of having a healthy delivery. Because Why? if your mom had a baby that was 10 pounds, you might want to be checked for gestational diabetes. Mm -hmm. If your mom <laughs> had severe depression, you might want to know about postpartum depression. So knowing your own history is very critical so that you're prepared. I think being prepared is helpful. Stop right there. Have you tried to find out any of those things? I had to. Go ahead. I have a couple of blood disorders that Dr. Frieden knows better about than I do. That's your doctor right there. Yes. So you're in good hands, so go ahead. Yeah, tell, tell us no, about I it. had a couple of blood I have a couple <clears throat> blood disorders that I found out before I was even thinking about getting pregnant. My sister um, got pregnant like two and a half years ago, almost three years ago, mm -hmm. and she found out she had the same thing. So then they brought my sister and I in, my sister and my mother and I in to check where the heck this came from. So I already knew what I was in for. What else did you check out? No, I, I'm healthy, like thank God. <laughs> no, I didn't really, besides that, no. Okay, let, let, I'm curious about this. Uh, I've gone through, it's so funny to say, I've gone through four pregnancies. Can I say that? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. You sure? Absolutely not. I'm surrounded by I, yeah. yeah. I can say that. It takes two. From, from, from a 19 year old turning 20, as we do the program, to a 22 month old little girl, right? Mm. So I've been through four, but actually never did the really hard work. I think to myself, um, I can't even imagine what it would be like to do the, the work of the mom, you know? Stress. This word keeps coming up. Now, I was stressed the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying, in terms of pregnancy health, you got to manage the stress. You got to reduce the stress. I don't Why are you making a face? Out. I don't feel stressed out. I don't really think there's anything to be stressed. Like, I'm not the first person to ever get pregnant. I'm not the last person to ever get pregnant. I have quite philosophical already. Oh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I have three doctors watching me at all times. Like, they know a heck of a lot more than I do if I just follow what they're, what's, the, what's there to be stressed out about? Let's talk about I'm not, stress. I'm not 16 years old having a baby, you know what I mean? Like, So wh hold on, watching the, the, the shows, <laughs> the so-called reality shows, teenage and pregnant, whatever mm -hmm. the hell they're called, that'll create time. stress, right? Sure will. Yeah. <laughs> it, talk about stress in this okay. whole thing. Well, you know, for a long time we said, oh, avoid stress, avoid stress, which is easier said than done. But um, there was sort of this free-floating anxiety about stress, and we didn't really know what effect it, it actually had, but we're learning more and more that stress actually does have a true physiologic effect on the body. Well, we've, we've learned that in things like um, the role that plays in preterm labor, the role that it plays in infant mortality. Um, there are absolute physical effects that stress can have on, the, um, on a woman's body that can affect the growth and development of blood flow to the placenta, um, raising her blood pressure. Um, uh, as I said, preterm birth. Um, so it really can have an actual physical effect. So what do you do? I mean, look where we live. Look, we are do we're right. doing the show in northern New Jersey, a couple miles outside of New York City. We live in a stressful area where things are stressful. But Absolutely. I think, Steve, what no? happens is that we have to look at our coping mechanisms. That, as you say, it's not just the stress of pregnancy in terms of, oh, my goodness, is the baby going to be okay? It has a lot to do with all stressors. Uh, but how about bumper work? To, bumper to bumper traffic. How about not, how about not having work? Aggravation mm -hmm. at your computer. Paying um, bills. All of the tension and the stressors that can, is the marriage okay? Is the relationship uh, yeah, yeah. okay? Um, all of those stressors, it really becomes internally to say, how do we cope with those things? And how do we see those things? And do we even see them as stressors? And do you simply say, all right, I'm going to a yoga class? I'm not I mean, sure. I'm a tiny gal. I punch things. I like kickboxing. Hold on, time out. At least before I jump back in. <laughs> yeah. You're not, I'm not a yoga oh, kind of person. You've been doing this show 25 years. This may be the greatest quote I've ever heard. I'm not a yoga kind of girl. Uh, I just punch things. Uh, what? I, I'm, not, I'm not really like cerebral and everything. No, like I. Uh, this is, by the way, this is PBS. Watch yourself. <laughs> what do no, you? You don't punch I'd people. You do punch things. No, I don't punch people. That's crazy. No, you I'd punch like, rather do kickboxing. Like I just finished running a marathon before I got pregnant. Okay, I'm not like a clarify. gentle exerciser. That but you do. But you're talking about how you get your stress out. Yeah, like I run. I how ran till I ran till about a month. A month. I ran a. I ran a race a month ago. I ran okay. a five, five, six mile race. So and that helps with stress, go ahead, Elise. That's, that's your coping mechanism. Yeah. There's another coping mechanism, which is outside of the studio, Steve, which is your mom. Yeah. And oh, yeah, so your mom's in the yeah. green room, not and, green, but go ahead. And I think that people don't realize that 
pregnancy is very difficult to go through alone. So if you have a mom, a sister, a close friend, that is a major factor in a successful pregnancy because your body is changing and there, is, there are enormous number of questions that you don't know. And quite frankly, you may not want to ask your doc because you're embarrassed. You may not want to ask your significant other because you don't want to reveal some of the things that are on your mind. So if you mm. can connect with other women, particularly whom are pregnant or who have gone through pregnancy, that's a stress but reliever. In your work, we, sorry for interrupting, in your organization, which does tremendous work, the Northern Consortium, right? Do you see more women having that support system that Barry has or not? I would say not, and I will tell you why. We are a very transient society, so we have moms who live in California with women who are located in Livingston. We have women in Newark whose moms have passed. So they don't necessarily have close family ties. And I think that we have something specific in Hispanic populations where the family focuses on the pregnant mom and stays intact. Mm. Just last night, a friend of mine said she was in the surgical intensive care unit waiting for her son to come out. And she said it was unbelievable. She was there by herself and her husband. And everybody there was there with a community. So if we don't figure out a community for the pregnant woman, she goes through it alone. So as a physician, as you listen to what Elise is saying, what kind of advice do you give your patients managing the stress, managing the emotions, managing the pregnancy, when you know that they can't do it alone? I get, of course a lot of women do it alone, but it is better not to do it alone. What do you say? I think the greatest thing, the greatest gift we can give them is the permission to uh, be vulnerable to say yes I feel stressed yes I'm anxious it's okay you're not alone you're not the only person to go through these feelings and to destigmatize it and make it okay to talk about it. Destigmatize not the pregnancy no, no, but the, the, anxiety the anxiety and the stress anxiety. about it. It doesn't make them a bad mom it doesn't make them a bad wife mm. it's normal to feel these things and that gets into the whole area of um, screening for postpartum depression. Women who go through that think that they're the only ones. How could I be a good mom if I'm Ooh, having these feelings? Up. That's a really important piece of information. Log on to our website. You'll find out information about this. Screening for postpartum depression, not when it's too late after the fact. Not that it's too late. It's never too late. But what do you mean screening before? Well, we screen women actually during pregnancy and again after delivery. Why but are you making a face here? I, I don't think I've been screened. You have. Oh, I have. Then I'm all right. <laughs> Look at that. And, and, and what, are you, what are you looking for? Um, we're looking for warning signs, risk factors. If people have a history, a family history, a personal history, if they're starting to have thoughts or feelings or concerns. I've had many women um, mention to me during their ultrasound or whatever, um, that, can I ask you a question? And you, when, when their mom or their husband leaves to go to the bathroom and they... they and by the way, alone. you say your husband. It may not be the husband. It could be whoever it is. Whoever the support person is. But I, 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 I want to do this. We were debating this mm -hmm. in, in our prep session before the show. I was going to use the word husband and I chose not to. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's to be PC or just to be accurate. Is it, is it the father? Is it the husband? Is it may it just be a partner. A it partner? Need, right, it needs it to be a person that is near and dear to you, someone that, is, that, that is. you're really connected to, that you feel as though that person is there for you and cares for you. And, and, and the, the fact is, the person with whom you made this baby may not be there. Mm -hmm. And that may not be the person who is there with you during this pregnancy. Correct. Okay, so let's just acknowledge, to simply say, oh, what role does the father play simplifies it because there are people other than the mm -hmm. father who can play that's that true. role. I just want to go through some other basic issues. Mm -hmm. Smoking out. Yeah. No smoking. Correct. Okay, alcohol. No alcohol. No. Thou shalt not drink while pregnant. There's no safe Across the board limit. here? No. There's no safe lower limit of alcohol. Say that again? There's no safe lower limit of alcohol. Doctor? Same. Exactly. Same? Ditto. Are you acknowledging this? Never touched a thing since I found out. I, why would you? That's the stupidest thing I've ever So heard. I hear someone say, come on, I'm at a party, I'm having a glass of wine, it's only my second trimester, come on, give me a break. No. I'm feeling a lot of stress. See, Barry said a key word there. Ever since I acknowledged, ever since I knew I was pregnant, there's something about knowing when you're pregnant that is very important in the whole a formula of having a healthy baby. That if we don't even take time to say, oh, did I miss my period? 
Well, do you do you think you're pregnant? Okay. Do you think you can be pregnant? It's so important to acknowledge your pregnancy early. Acknowledge. You don't want to wait until 12 weeks before you acknowledge your pregnancy because that baby is forming. And if you're drinking during those first 12 weeks is when you're most likely to cause damage. But Yvonne, Yvonne, you make it sound like some women would not acknowledge their pregnancy even though intellectually they know they are pregnant, but for some other scared re half to death, some people. Yeah. So some you wouldn't are, acknowledge it? Some it, people are probably scared half to death. I'm you, lucky I have a you, husband that I love to death. I have a great family. Some people are be scared, probably scared half to death. And they won't. By not acknowledging it. somehow it doesn't exist, at well, least? Think, it's not happening? I, I think that there's ambivalence. I think that the acknowledgement um, goes in two ways. First of all, um, people who are having sex, who understand the consequences potentially of sex, basically acknowledge it sooner. But there are young people, Steve, really young people, I'm talking about eighth graders, who end up with a man who may be taking advantage of them. They okay. don't make that connection, and I think that we have I, to be... I would go even broader. There are people who work outside of the healthcare field, and they might not even be recording their last menses, and not really clearly understand to say, well, you know, I skip a period from time to time, and really not connect the dots to say, wait a minute, I missed my period. And so that becomes so important um, in, the, in the whole, you know. So acknowledging that you are pregnant is not something we should assume everyone does absolutely. so easily. Do not. So absolutely, okay. especially those outside of the medical profession. A couple profession. other things, Doctor, I want to come back to you. Working. And we have a group of very talented uh, women who happen to run this production company. And we have a lot of talented guys. In, I say most of the guys, most of the people who run the cameras and the technical production team, we have a first-rate production team, disproportionately are men. Mm. A lot of the producers and the editors and, and the people who do things behind the scene happen to be women, right. just the way it breaks down. Um, some of them are pregnant, have babies, some may move in that direction. I I'm curious. Now, I happen to think that this is a great job because they have an incredible boss. Um, <laughs> You may or may not get the joke there. Uh, a lot of laughter apparently in the control room. So I'm sitting there saying, wait a minute. Is it better for a woman who becomes pregnant to keep working in a job she enjoys, get satisfaction at, but frankly is challenging? Or does she say, listen, it's better, healthy pregnancy, I'm going to stop working? Well, it's really a personal choice. If, is it? If a woman is it based on economics largely? It's, you know, it, that's what makes it personal. For some people, it may be economic, it may be social pressures, it may be that her partner doesn't want her to work anymore. But in the overwhelming majority of cases, if, as long as there's no medical or obstetrical contraindication to working, there's no reason that women can't continue to work throughout, so the, when? Pre throughout the pregnancy. <laughs> throughout, you got to be more specific. Throughout, um, until and unless there is a medical or obstetrical reason to stop working, such as preterm labor, bleeding, hypertension, things like that. Otherwise, that will, right to the end? Um, most women stop around 36 weeks or so because it's getting very close and they're just uncomfortable and they're fatigued and then, okay. then that becomes a medical reason to, to stop. Okay. Uh, I worked till Friday and gave birth on Sunday for both children, both go. of my daughters. And I think it was very healthy for me because I didn't obsess about how much weight am I gaining, am I missing out on a party because I'm not drinking. The reality was that I thankfully was healthy and therefore I went right from my office at a hospital to the delivery room. It worked out beautifully. That was right for you. That was well. For, By the way, right for me. can we talk about, uh, you mentioned something else. Um, curious. Exercise, we did not talk exercise. Yeah. Should a woman who has not exercised all of a sudden, I know again, you got to consult your physician, everything's personal, customized, right? A woman has not exercised. She says, you know, I'm going to start exercising. I'm pre pregnant now and I want to do the right thing. I don't want to gain that much weight. I'm going to start exercising. Good or bad idea? Well, you know, it should be with the physician's supervision. Um, it's a good idea to become active. It may be start slow, take walks every day. Something very low key. Eating healthy is always good advice. Um, stay well hydrated, but it's not the time to start running marathons if you've not. never done that. Not the time if you haven't done that before. Okay. Obesity is such a big issue in our society mm -hmm. today. So connect obesity to the issue of pregnancy. Okay, so that means... Yeah, we, we see more complications in obesity. For those, for those women who are overweight, who have gained over 30, 40, 
50 pounds during the pregnancy, we see more complications, whether it's diabetes, right. whether it's hypertension, whether it's preterm labor. Um, there are lots of other issues that begin to happen with um, excessive weight gain during are the pregnancy. We, so are we then saying that if a woman is thinking of getting pregnant, if she is able then to get pregnant, that she should be, she should be thinking about getting her weight under control before she gets pregnant? That's always good advice. That's good advice. Whether she's going to get pregnant or not get pregnant, it's a good idea to get weight under control. It's just good for your general health. And as I said, what's good for general health is generally going to be good for the Did pregnancy. you do any of those things, Barry? I mean, you always worked out. I was in the best health of my life before I got pregnant. Describe I ran it. my first marathon. I ran my first. I ran the New York City Marathon with my husband on November 5th. That was was it part of the plan? You're going to no, run a marathon and then no. get pregnant? Well, after when we were started getting trained, I'm like, once we're done with that, yes. But it so wasn't, the night of the I'm marathon, you guys said, all right. <laughs> right after? Really? Well, no. Well, I, I had to, like, I had IUD. I had to get the IUD taken out. Like, they're like, yeah, okay. yeah but. Okay. Oh. Uh, moving right along. Um, Steve, I did not expect I... it to go right there. Uh, yes, you were saying. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but, but there is something I know about it's planning true, but pregnancies. I don't have to say everything that's true. Yeah, but, there <laughs> is, but there is something about planning pregnancies. Go and ahead. That really, that IUD speaks to it, planning the pregnancy. What do you and mean? So that when, plan, when pregnancies just happen, then we don't realize when we're pregnant. So we don't acknowledge pregnancies. 50% of pregnancies are unplanned. Yeah. 50%? 50% are yes. unplanned. Yes. So when you're talking about acknowledging pregnancies, it's you have to realize we have to first get past understanding that you are pregnant when you weren't even thinking and about pregnancy. And so there's pregnancy. planning going on here. Say that again. I said there's planning going on. You're like I finished for this. For some people. Gonna, well, sometimes. For, yeah. Okay. So, so we're saying to, to, <laughs> for the healthier pregnancy, it, it is better to be planning. Yes. Yes. Than to not. Yes. yes. That's correct. Okay. Can we do all right? Since you brought it up, can we do <laughs> sex and, and uh, pregnancy? Well, yeah, we can talk about it, Doctor. How Sex would you like to handle it? I'm not upset, Bill Berlin. I am not obsessed with it. It's the the public, ne the PBS public needs and wants to know these questions. Yeah. Sex and pregnancy. In general, it's sort of like um, exercise and working in pregnancy. Um, consult with the physician and find out. Make sure there's no medical or obstetrical reason not to. Most of the time, there's not a reason to abstain from sex during pregnancy. So if a wife, sa wife says, "Come on, it's two months in. I'm done," there's reason for concern. I would say speak to the physician and see. There may be a reason. There are, certainly are some reasons why that may be a concern, but for the majority of cases, it's not. It's you not should be speaking to a marriage counselor at that point. Um, but there's no. no real physical, usually. Sometimes right. there, are, there are certain reasons. Right. There but are check certain that reasons out. Why, but check that out first. Speak with your obstetrician first and find out if, there's, if it's safe or it's not safe. And Got then it. Go from but there. Steve, yes. I want to say something about the role of the father of the baby. When you talk about checking it out, I think that the father of the baby needs to be encouraged to also ask questions. So sure. if that was presented to a dad, he should also call the OB or the midwife and say, my wife tells me this, can you just share with me whether or not there is a contraindication? Because I think that one of the concerns that I have is that men also need permission to ask questions. You can do that? You that's, can, you I can get into that. that though, because that's an issue of HIPAA. That may yeah, be a, I thought there a, were a laws confidentiality that's, issue. So the woman, with the wife or the woman would have to be part of that discussion or present or give permission for that discussion. I call you. My wife's being treated by you. She says, listen, honey, three months in, my doctor told me it's not a good time. I go, oh, okay. I call you. You're going to talk mm -hmm. to me about this? Um, I, would speak with, I, would, I would speak with my patient yeah, I'm the first. Husband. I would speak with my patient first and say, um, your husband called me, he had some questions, are you comfortable with my discussing with him or would you like to be present when we speak? Okay. I wouldn't speak to you without her permission. And the other thing is that I always tell women, as long as you're comfortable, if you're not comfortable, that's the end of the discussion. Because she is the patient. She even is though, the patient. Even though everyone says you're treating the whole family, it is primarily... Primarily it's the mom. Hey, what have we missed? We've got three minutes left. Uh, healthy pregnancy, what have we missed? Because I got other stuff. I got, I got seafood issues. Ooh. Come on. I hear, is it a myth? Decrease mercury. De big fish, any fish larger than your hair, stay away from it. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, you want to minimize it at least. So if you're eating tuna, if you're eating salmon, okay. large fish tend to hold on to mercury. Smaller fish don't stay in the water long enough for that to happen. You're, you're so going if you're eating with this? the smaller That's fish. Good. I had never heard that one before. Yeah, keep but your I like hand. Yes, like nothing, it. yeah. Okay, hair dye. Way to dyeing your hair. Yeah. There's, not a, there's not a lot of data. Not a lot about of data on this. I, listen, I only want to go with relevant, important information. Weight gain. Is there an amount, there is it a case-by-case case basis or? Well, there are general guidelines. If someone's normal weight, it's generally about 25 pounds or so is a good 
weight gain in pregnancy, but if someone is already obese to start with, then we recommend gaining a little bit less. Listen, like 30 seconds it's left. very scary and annoying, this whole weight gain thing, because you really try to stay like in the barriers that they tell you, but you can't work out too much, or you're gonna stress out this, and you should keep moving. It, like once you get later into like eight months, like it just gets irritating, because you still have to eat. Okay. <laughs> well, you look great. You are great. Thank you're going to you. have a great. You're having a great pregnancy already, and we will do postpartum depression on another show. I can't believe you brought that up before. <laughs> the preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Englewood Hospital and Medical Center, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents, and by New Jersey Natural Gas, proud to support education in our communities. Promotional support provided by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey, The Star Ledger, and NJ.com, everything Jersey and by New Jersey Monthly, the magazine of the Garden State, available at newsstands. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios. Health First New Jersey Medicare Plan is growing in the Garden State. Thousands of members in Bergen, Essex, Hudson, Passaic, and Union Counties depend on Health First New Jersey Medicare Plan. And in January 2012, Health First New Jersey Medicare Plan will be available in Somerset and Middlesex counties as well. If you're eligible for Medicare and live in New Jersey, find out more about Health First New Jersey Medicare Plan. Health First New Jersey Medicare Plan. Feel good about your health care coverage. This is one-on-one. -on -one. I'm a poor boy, Join me as we get up close and personal with some of today's most compelling personalities. This is one you can't afford to miss. Weeknights at 7 and 11.30 p.m. on NJTV and 12.30 a.m. on 13.